for the September quarter. Have a look. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time. This result for the September quarter, it's the worst of all the 28 OECD nations that have reported thus far. They all had Delta outbreaks as well. Why is ours the worst? Well, more than 80 countries, Kieran, have seen lockdowns over the course of the Delta outbreak. But we had our two biggest states, New South Wales and Victoria, in extended lockdowns. And the New South Wales economy uh, contracted by 6.5% for the September quarter. But the good news is those lockdowns are behind us. Since that time, we've seen 350,000 jobs come back since the start of September. Uh, we know that job ads are more than 30% higher than going into the pandemic. Business investment is more than 9% higher through the year. And business investment intentions in the non-mining sector are the highest on record. And consumption is coming back uh, in the... Uh, in the uh, recent retail sales numbers, we've seen it up by more than 4.8% for the October period. But the 28 so nations... Pretty, they're pretty good signs for the economy going tw forward. 28 nations in the OECD that have reported so far for September, we're the worst result. What, why is that? Well, we had a Delta outbreak. But they, so did they. Well, they, they didn't have as long a lockdowns, but then we had... Um, lockdowns that didn't go as long as them uh, last year and into early this year. Uh, Kieran, we... So it's the state's fault? It's, it, Kieran... Is it New it, South Wales and Victoria's fault? It's the virus's fault. Uh, we are living now with the virus. But we saw the Australian economy rebound stronger than any other advanced economy into the beginning of this year. Then we were hit by the Delta outbreak. As you know, the Morrison government responded with extensive economic support, uh, whether it was the $13 billion we partnered with the state governments, whether it was the COVID disaster payments that went to individual households and families, we responded. And the good news is the economy is now turning. We're looking to a strong you said that quarter. again, you said that after the last downturn as well. Well, the good Can you see why people might be sceptical this time? Well, Kieran, we, have, we had another downturn of quite significant magnitude. Kieran, I think everybody understands um, that COVID, Delta outbreaks, um, they're major threats. And now we're dealing with a new variant of the vaccine, but we've got to keep our heads with that, with Omicron. Um, but the key point is the prospect for the Australian economy is very positive. Uh, we've seen stronger uh, labour market recovery than initially expected. We've seen household consumption it, pick that, up. That labour we've market seen business almost, investment numbers, which are positive. It's all, in, in a way, if you, you know, you talk to businesses every day of, of your working life, they are all saying they're dealing with labour shortages. Workforce so how important is it to reopen those borders to skilled migrants on December 15? Well, it's really important that we open the borders when it's safe to do so. And we took what I think was a... A precautionary measure, a sensible measure, it's one that's had bipartisan support to put the pause on for two weeks. I don't think it, um, it, it's a radical action. I think it's a proportionate one. Uh, at the same time, we're looking to open our borders as soon as it's safe to do so. We've already made some adjustments for Australian citizens and residents. But Kira, so you're hoping December 15 will be the resumption? Well, obviously, that will depend on the medical advice. But some of the early signs are positive. We're obviously focused on the transmissibility of this new variant, the severity of this new variant, and the ability of vaccines to be a defence against this new variant. But again, I come back to the labour market and unemployment. When we came to government, unemployment was 5.7%. Today, it's 5.2%, even after the first recession in nearly 30 years. And we've got the RBA forecasting that the unemployment rate will go down into the fours at a sustained level for only the second time in half a century. Mm. You know, we've avoided the scarring of the labour market with long-term unemployment that was so characteristic of the recessions in the 1980s and the 1990s. We've avoided that so in far. our economic support so has played a role. But you say, the, you say the lockdowns are behind us, but we don't know that, do we? Um, we hope so, but we don't know that because this virus is diabolical. Well, the Delta lockdowns are behind us, and obviously with the vaccination rates higher, um, higher than ever and also one of the highest in the world, it does all go well for the future. Now, one of the huge issues hitting people's uh, budgets, personal budgets, is petrol prices. Mm. Can you do anything about that? Because right now, 
we're heading into Christmas, people are going to be driving all over the country and those petrol prices will bite. Well, of course, higher petrol prices uh, goes to the heart of people's disposable income. Uh, they often have no other choice but to you know, get to and from work and obviously a courier around their family. Um, are, you, are, you, are you helpless in dealing with that? Well, we have the ACCC as a cop on the beat to ensure that competition law is upheld and that there's no cartel behaviour and no manipulation of the price. International factors... Um, are most often a play here when it comes to petrol prices. So there's not uh, a lot be, you can because do. Because of the supply, because of the supply issues, and because of some of the big producers. So people just have to grin and bear it, I guess. Well, what we saw in today's numbers was that household disposable income had lifted, and if you talk about energy prices mm. more broadly, electricity prices are down by 10% since December 2018. They doubled under Labor. Since December 18, they're down by 10% under us. A couple of other quick issues that I've got to ask you about. The story we're running this afternoon. Um, were you aware that a friend of the Prime Minister, Scott Briggs, was involved in setting up a private quarantine proposal to run next year with his company's scoping costs picked up by the Department of Home Affairs? Well, those matters in relation to quarantine are matters that come under Home Affairs, so you're best directing that to, to the relevant minister. But we've been told the Home Affairs Secretary said in a call with business organisations that the Prime Minister, Treasurer and the Government were very interested in this private quarantine proposal. Is that a fair characterisation? Well, well Kieran, um, you know better um, that you don't believe everything you hear. I certainly know better than to believe everything I hear from a journalist. Um, I don't know what Mike Pizzullo no said. No I, offense. No, I don't know what Mike Pizzullo uh, said on that call. You're best directing those questions to the Home Affairs Minister. And finally, you're a great mate. The Health Minister, Mr Hunt, sounds like he might be calling it a day. Well, I'll leave any, um, any comments on such matters to, to Greg himself. Uh, he is a great mate. Uh, we're the godfather to to each other's children. He um, has been an outstanding health minister during this once in a century pandemic. The fact that Australia has one of the lowest fatality rates in the world and one of the highest vaccination rates in the world is a real credit to him. Treasurer, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you.